the Vikings, they go down and say, sorry. Now, with that being, with that being the pick segment done, I'm ready to take on all combatants on Tom Brady being the greatest quarterback ever. You can either do it via chat or you can do it via 773-803-9824. 773-803-9824. I've been waiting on this fight for a long time. Now, I'm going to give y'all about a Jeopardy 10 seconds to see if anybody's going to call and take on this fight. If not, I'm ready to fight via chat. Either way, we got we got a little more time. I'm having a good time. Man, thank y'all again, man. This is the End of the Bench Podcast. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I'm having a ball as usual. It's a lot of fun. And uh and thanks for the social commentary, uh Tiff and uh, uh Big L and uh whoever else I was talking to uh, going back and forth with. I'm just saying, you know, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoy that more than uh I enjoy that more than uh, uh sports conversation, social commentary you know, because I love my people and uh, I'm always trying to make our community a little bit better. But now that I'm gonna get y'all that little bit, Tom Brady is not the greatest quarterback of all time. For reason number one, in the 80s, the quarterbacks were get, being protected as well, but they were not being protected as much. We are in a league, whereas offensive, quarter, uh, offensive football is being pushed to the forefront, meaning it's easier to play quarterback. And because it's easy to play quarterback, if you're naturally good, you will look better than you are. That's why Kirk Cousins got an $85 million contract when he would have been finished it back in the day. You can't play where they're making it easier. Just like I said at the beginning of the show, there have been five or seven 50-point games in the NBA. Don't tell me that these dudes are scoring. I posted a video in the end of the bench group. Please join the end of the bench. T-H-A-E-N-D-O-L-D-A-B-E-N-C-H on Facebook. Talk crazy. Post what you want. We're going to have a good time. No goofies, no trolls. We ain't, we ain't Nick Wayne man Carl. We're going to have a good time talking crazy. But Back to back to football. Uh, Tom Brady is a excellent quarterback, great quarterback, but he's not the greatest of all time. Um, the reason I say that is when you were in the eighties being a quarterback. Now, let's just go back to our era. We're not gonna go back to our grandfather era. Whoa, whoa. Otto Graham and uh and uh even though I do think uh, Johnny United should be in the conversation, but I'm not gonna go that far back because I didn't see Johnny United's play. And I know Roger the Dodger, but I didn't really see. I saw him play, but I wasn't cognizant of what was going on. But I, would, I, I knew what was going on by the time Joe Montana hit the scene. So we're going to start at the mighty Joe Montana. Now, but this, this is the thing. When Joe Montana was doing this thing, he was doing it against Rod Ma, uh, Harvey Mon, Danny, uh, uh, Red Randy White, Ed Tutal Jones, and others. Okay, Jay Shabazz said Joe Montana. Ah. Uh, I'm not going to say who I say until I get to the end of this. Now, when he was doing that, you also was doing it against the likes of Charles Mann on, on, on the Washington Racial Slurs and Dexter Manley on the Washington Racial Slurs. You had uh, overrated Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael, Richard Dent, uh, Al Harris on the Bass, Wilbur Marshall, and uh, Otis Wilson. Then you had Tim Harris up at Green Bay. Then you had Chris Dolman and, and, uh, uh, and that crew up in uh, Minnesota. Uh, Chris Dolman and uh, I can't think of it's a couple of those other guys up in Minnesota. You had Lawrence Taylor, you had Harry Carson, you had uh, 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 Lyndon Marshall in New York. Um, I did the Washington racial slurs. You had that 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 that, that uh, Jackson, Pat Swillen, and Ricky John, Ricky Jackson, and uh, uh, the Saints. These dudes were blowing down Joe Montana's strokes at all times. And then you had Bruce Smith in the AFC, Neil Smith in the AFC, uh, 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 Greg Townsend should have been a, should be a Hall of Famer, and Howie Long in the AFC. I can go on and on and on and on about the type of pressure that quarterbacks had on their asses during the, the uh, '80s and the '90s. It was a it was, the game was knock the quarterback out the game, not keep the quarterback upright and healthy. The defense was were more Reg, Reggie White. I didn't even name Reggie White, Clyde Simmons, uh, Jerome Brown, Seth Joyner with the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's not even counting Joe Jacoby and the Dallas Cowboys situation with Charles Haley and so forth and so on. 
But it was a more physical game. It was the exact same game. And he ran a more complex offense. Joe Montana did. So when you have less pressure and it is geared towards your skill set, that knocks you down the peg. And people say, well, Tom Brady was playing what he was doing. He's done more with less. No, he's done more with less with one less marquee name. Joe Montana. I mean, let's not even start at the top. Let's start with the likes of John Elway, who is just happens to be the person who I consider to be the number two quarterback of all time. Sorry, Tom Brady fans, he's not even number two on my list. Joe Mont John Elway did less with more for real. Joe Montana and Tom Brady played with legendary coaches. John Elway took five teams to Super Bowl. He was the quarterback for five Super Bowl teams. He got the doors blown off him on three, and in two he won. The reason I'm bringing this up is you, I, I would name Tommy Jackson, Carl Mecklenburg, and Steve Atwater, and I'll challenge you guys to name two or three more other people, and you could. So that is a dude who's actually doing less with more, more with less. I don't understand the three amigos, but nobody. I challenge just about anybody to name all three. Of, name three of them. I'll give you two on Ricky, Ricky, uh, Ricky Jackson, and uh, Vance Johnson. Give me the other one, and you be you might get a sick out from me, like with BS three. So when I look around the league, it was more competitive. It was everybody trying to win. Everybody had competition. They were they were in. Well, John was in a more competitive division because he was playing against the Seahawks with Kirk. Uh, uh, Tom, Kirk, Dave Craig and Kurt Warner. He was the Raiders who had won a couple Super Bowls. He was uh, uh, with Kansas City Chiefs who were always, they've always been competitive. So when you look at second of all time, I have to put John Elway right there because he's doing more with less. And he didn't have their big time coach until the end of his career. And by the way, the dude who coached up Joe Montana just happened to be the dude who coached up John Elway. Now, when you look at Tom Brady, I, I'm forced to go with Bill Belichick, Romeo Cornell, and a host of coaches that have been very good around him. And yes, he's had no marquee names on his list, and he has eight Super Bowl appearances, five wins, and blah, 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 blah. But Tom Brady has had the, the ability to have one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game as his coach, and he's been in this situation, and he has been extremely productive. So. I would be remiss to say that Tom Brady is not in the conversation. I just happened to put Joe Montana in front of him. The reason I put Joe Montana in front of him, and, it's, it is, and I'm not knocking Tom Brady because of this, and it has nothing to do with Joe Montana. Everybody tells me, Tom Brady got five Super Bowl championships. Everybody listening, do me a favor. Name your top three defensive players of all time. Or you know what, let's go with defensive linemen or pass rushers of all time. Well, if anybody who's listening, please give me your top three def def defensive pass rushers of all time. And this is why the five. This is why I'm going to refute this. He won. He's been to eight Super Bowls. He won five. Because going to eight Super Bowls is an awesome feat, but quarterbacks get too much of the grade, but not enough of the grade. When Tom Brady has a bad game, it's, it's Bill Belichick and the defense as well. Or he was throwing to nobody's when he has a good game. Look at what he did with the misfits of science. And I'll do it. I've already done it. You got Bruce Smith. You got Reggie White. You got Lawrence Taylor. And so forth and so on. That's what you would name. One player that I know that you would not name is Charles Hayden. The very first man in NFL history to have five Super Bowl rings. And he was a major contributor to all five. The 49ers had a top three to five defense every year that they won the Super Bowl. And Charles Haley, besides the last one, Charles Haley was on each one of those. Well, he won, he, he won three Super Bowls with the San Francisco 49ers and two Super Bowls with the Cowboys. The Cowboys needed Charles Haley because they needed pass rush. So this is a Hall of Famer. He has five Super Bowls. He played a major role in five Super Bowls. And nobody even talks about him being the greatest, even though he played a key role in all of them. So the fact that Tom Brady won five Super Bowls, it, it, it does not give him the top slot. I am a person who goes along with impact on the game. and not minimizing Tom Brady's impact on the game at all. 
because I'm not a dickhead. I'm not going to do that. But when you talk about Joe Montana's impact on the football team, Joe Montana won two Super Bowls before he heard these two words strung together, Jerry Rice. Anybody ever heard the name Mike Wilson? Outside of Dwight Clark, you ever heard of, outside of the catch, you didn't know who Dwight Clark was. Ronaldo Skis Nehemiah. Nobody knows who he is. Mike Wilson. Nobody knows who he is. Joe Montana won two Super Bowls and won two Super Bowl MVPs with those guys. And then he went on to win more Super Bowls. And if you don't understand why I picked Joe, put Joe Montana at the forefront, you can't name, if you don't talk about this current ending case in the, in, in the nation of the Kansas City Chiefs, you will not be able to name me a Kansas City Chief wide receiver. And Joe Montana took that team to the NFC, AFC Championship game. And he was washed at that point. So this is why Joe Montana will eternally be, in modern football history, my number one. I'm never going to knock Tom Brady because he is an excellent quarterback. He's the greatest of his era. He is unofficially the LeBron James of his era. And if you want to say he, he won more than LeBron James, first and foremost, when did we get to the point where getting to the NBA Finals is a bad thing? Ask Bob Lanier, ask Dave Bean, ask David Thompson, ask George Gervin, ask Alice English, ask Dominique Wilkins, would they have liked to have lost in the NBA Finals? All of those guys I just named are great players at their position, greatest of all time, Hall of Famer, and some of them were 50 greatest, and they never played in the NBA Finals. So to knock someone for losing the NBA Finals is a bit asinine if you ask your boy H. Rap. With that being said, I got three minutes to send shots out to my, my ancestors, big ups to the ancestors of my family who made it possible for me to be here and protect me every day. And they protect you as well, and you and yours. Shout out to the Williams, the Miggins, the Blackledge, the Pollitts, and the, Whit the Whitmore and the Cotton family. Those are my ancestors. Big ups to them. Always watching over me. Thank you guys for listening to my show. I really enjoy doing this show twice a week. I'm going to continue to do it. I'm working on a few other guests. I was talking to uh, one of Rick Mahorn's people. That's going to be pretty interesting. And remember, I'm going to jump on the soapbox for like a second. Remember. Now, yeah, I'm going to do that Tuesday. I'm going to do that Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I got a real good soapbox for y'all Tuesday. It's going to be interesting. Tune in. Tune in Tuesday. I'm going to thank everybody for James Shabazz for always listening, but come find get in the uh, chat room. I want to thank my man RC Joe from Houston, Big L. Tiffany, thank you for the social commentary. I really enjoyed it. Grego, much love, brother. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Jungle brother, even though your phone died on you, thanks for Big L, the greatest. I want to thank uh, Mocha always. Thank you for the support and everything you do. That bad DJ love the jams. Follow that bad DJ, people. Follow that bad DJ. Much love to him. Uh, I want to thank, uh, I did say Gregor. I said Mocha. I said RC. Thanks, Vince from X Squad. Follow Vince, y'all. I want, I want you to thank, uh, I want to thank Shaka. Much love to Shaka. Uh, DJ Knox, man, y'all got to tune in to DJ Knox. I want to thank uh, uh, Bama, Roll Tide, big up to Bama. Good luck tonight on the uh, Heisman. Uh, Kesey, Mo Cheese, follow Mo Cheese and Kesey, good entertaining shows. Follow Angry Black Man, follow the homie Jungle Brother. Thank you, Red, for dumping in. Good luck to your sons tonight if you're still listening. Uh, Big Illinois, much love. Joe from Houston, much love. Tiffany Sports and Hills, much love. Um, going through the list and trying to get through as far as is possible. Uh, if I miss you, I'm getting busy scrolling down this thing. If I miss you, I apologize. And uh Oh yeah, I got Rough Buff in the building. Always, always good. The way they men the show, Jelani, uh, he got a, a, a fundraiser. Please support the fundraiser for a man. It's all. Or, or if I, I think I said his name wrong. I hope I did. If I butcher your name, uh, uh, BS3 Ben from BS3. Much love, man. Thank y'all. And I want to say uh, always see y'all uh, Monday. I mean, excuse me. See y'all Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Tuesday or oh, oh, uh, two.